Hi everyone, good afternoon. Thank you for joining us today for our webinar on Integrations Files, Data, and APIs, Oh My. I'm Laura Ladd with Mosaic Consulting Group and we are so glad to have all of you guys with us today. Today we're going to give you an overview on UltiPro integrations and the benefits to your business. UltiPro is the system of record for HR and payroll data for many companies, but UltiPro does not operate in a vacuum. UltiPro relays accurate, consistent data to and from numerous systems, processes, and vendors. Using UltiPro as your source of truth to feed other internal and external systems means all your data is updated. Integrations offer a way to reduce manual data entry, maintain your data integrity, and mitigate fraud risk. Today, we're going to talk about the types of integrations available with the UltiPro platform and the situations where you would deploy one over others. Matt Hill, our Chief Strategy Officer at Mosaic Consulting Group, will host our discussion today. Some areas we're going to cover today include integration types, including back office imports and exports, web import tool, UCN interfaces, SQL framework interfaces, web services and APIs, hosted API solutions, and OODs. Um, within those, we'll talk about when to use and not to use certain integrations, the pros and cons of certain types of integrations, some best practices and pitfalls to avoid, as well as resource requirements of some of these different integrations. A little bit about Matt. Uh, Matt has more than 20 years of experience in process improvement, project management, implementations, process optimization, and technology solutions, including seven years working with the UltiPro Human Capital Management Solution. As Chief Strategy Officer for Mosaic, Matt drives company business strategy, identifies and deploys new product and service offerings, and aligns the right resources, tools, and team members to position our team to help our clients maximize their investment in UltiPro. Before we get started, I want to go over a few housekeeping notes for you guys. First, I want to address the question I know is foremost on everyone's minds. Will I get a copy of this presentation and recording afterward, and when? Yes, you will. We'll put a link to our blog in the chat box at the bottom of the page, where you can find our blog on integrations as a bonus to accompany today's webinar. Also, later in the day, we'll send a follow-up email to you thanking you for joining us and with a link to the recording and the slides from our presentation today. We hope you'll forward this to anyone else in your company who you think might be interested, who might not have been able to join us today. Finally, we will reserve some time for Q&A at the end. You can ask us to pause at any time during the presentation to answer your questions. You can simply put a question in the chat bubble that's at the bottom middle of your screen. Our team is monitoring the chat and they'll either answer your question directly in the chat or flag me and stop me so we can ask Matt to address your question personally. Or we can also go into further detail during the Q&A at the end. Thank you again for joining us today, and now I will turn it over to Matt. Thanks, Laura. <clears throat> Excuse me. Thank you guys for joining. Um, we'll preface that today is not to be a coding and instructional class. Uh, I don't think you guys want me to teach you how to do, do uh, imports and exports, because uh, I'm as well as a, a pretty poor speaker, I'm also a pretty poor coder. Um, but hope today to give you some conversational knowledge of different types of Fulci Pro integrations. Uh, I have two of our technical consultants on the call, Dan and Jonathan, that'll keep me honest and uh, answer the more technical questions should they arise. So what are inter integrations? Uh, integrations are kind of programmed methods to exchange data between UltiPro and an external system or a process or an entity. Uh, like Laura said, UltiPro is the system of record for most HR payroll data. Um, so that's, it's the best source uh, to feed a lot of these other, other systems. Um, and what do I mean by that is, uh, if the Department of Labor showed up on your doorstep or you got a subpoena for, for employee related information, where would you go to get it? And typically that's, that's UltiPro for most, most of our clients. So why do we have integrations? Uh, it's to, to 
have consistent, accurate data among multiple systems. Uh, it also consolidates data so you can make better informed decisions and reduces the, the risk and vulnerabilities for security, security, fraud, and compliance. So, you know, an example there is, uh, let's say your general ledger file. You know, if, if you're uh, allowing one of your team members to uh, download the G or generate the GL file and, and it's a file that they can manipulate, um, you can cover up uh, errors, waste, fraud, abuse, that kind of thing by manual manipulation. But if you have, have the, the GL file automated to go to your GL system, um, it, it maintains the data integrity and, and um, um, has, has the consistent and the controls in place uh, that, that you maintain your, your accounting. So what questions to ask when you're determining the type of integration need? Uh, what data fields need to be sent um, and, and where are they gonna be sent? Uh, what's the frequency of data exchange? What resources do you have available from an IT standpoint or staff or staff experience? Uh, what's the priority, the sensitivity and the security of the data being exchanged? And then what are the restrictions and capabilities of the UltiPro integration methods? So some, some methods are able to do things that other, others are not. So like, like Laura said, uh, we're gonna go through quite a few different types of integrations. Um, and we're gonna start kind of uh, with the more legacy methods and, and work our way up to the more, more recent and more complex and, and uh, uh, functional integrations. We'll start out with back office imports and exports. Um, many of you, if you've been on OT Pro for a while, you've, You've run, probably created uh, back office imports and exports. Uh, you've probably run them, probably run them on a, on a pretty frequent basis. Some of the common applications for, for back office imports and exports are like time clock imports, uh, GL exports, bank and notcha file exports, 401k contribution uh, files, uh, as well as benefit vendor uh, change imports. Uh, they're template driven, driven, excuse me. <clears throat> and these are, are mostly manual. There's kind of limited automation available for, for back office uh, imports and exports. Um, but most of them are file-based imports and exports. So you're, you're receiving a file from another system and importing it, or you're uh, exporting a file that's going to be shipped off to a, to a vendor. I will pause there just to check the chat and make sure we don't have questions. Cool. I think we're good, Matt. Awesome. Uh, next, we'll go into the web import tool. Uh, the web import tool was rolled out, um, has been around for a couple of years, but it was rolled out to uh, general population and uh, uh, all UltiPro accounts about this time last year. Um, and it, it, it's, it's not, uh, you know, a, an end all be all, uh, but it does have, is a pretty powerful tool um, and can turn days of work doing things like uh, organizational changes or something like that into a couple of hours. Um, it, it's like it says built into the web um, and it is built around the business processes and, and workflows of UltiPro so it uses those uh, those processes to be able to import uh, a large amount of data uh, some some uh, benefits of it uh, it allows partial loads uh, so like in back office imports and exports you know, one data field can make the entire file fail to be imported. Um, with the web import tool, it will kick out just the errors and let you actually fix the errors 
uh, as you're doing an import where it, uh, back office imports and exports, you would have to go fix the file and then re-import. If that makes sense. So web import tool gives you a little bit more user friendly um, interface and then also lets you, um, you know, not, not have to manipulate the file itself. You know, if you've got all these different rows that are, that are failing, you can just, just pick those data fields and fix those. Um, you're able to make a lot of mass employee related data changes. Um, but it's not for system configuration changes. So what I mean by that is uh, I can't go in and maybe I'm, I need to add 10 different department codes uh, that, that are currently not available. I can't import those using the web import tool. Uh, I would have to go in either back office import or, uh, you know, manually in, uh, add the departments, um, but what I could do is once those department codes are, are added, I can go change 150, 200, whatever employees and change the department for all those employees. So some common applications for the web import tool are mass employee organizational changes, like I mentioned earlier. <coughs> uh, importing data for clients that, that don't have access to back office. Uh, mass deduction updates, so such as open enrollment, license and certification updates, company property, uh, and smart tax. So you can you can run uh, employees through smart tax using the web import tool. Uh, like back office imports and exports, uh, the web import tool is a file based. Uh, process and uh, but unlike back office imports and exports uh, these imports can be automated um, so you can use csv files or xml's that um, if they're going to a certain place on ood's they can automatically be be uh, imported through the web import tool matt can uh -huh. i ask you to pause and we've got a question sure. in the chat box um, do you know if it's possible to import into the business rules section of AltiPro? I will pass that off to my, my lovely assistant, Dan. Dan? Uh, yeah, th at this time, uh, it's not really possible to import directly into the business rules. Um, you know, that might be a feature coming down the road, but uh, right now, most of the imports that are available are for strictly uh, updating or adding to employee records. Right. They're saying, for example, importing GL rules. Uh, yeah, at this time, there really isn't um, you know, at least a uh, end user accessible way to import those uh, kind of business rules or uh, you know business setup related fields. All right, thanks. Sure. Uh, next, we will go over uh, UCN interfaces. Uh, UCN interfaces are the ultimate carrier network, um, and ultimate has agreements with some of the larger vendors, especially the uh, medical dental vision vendors and has created uh, interfaces in the, in the kind of quote unquote main Ulti Pro engine uh, where they, they have agreed upon format with these large vendors um, and they maintain the template of how those vendors want these files set up in one, one spot. So if the vendor wants to change the, the file requirements or the file format, Ultimate can change that in one place and, and all clients that have that particular UCN interface is updated at once. The drawback to UCN interfaces is they're very limited in the vendors that are available. Um, you can see some of the bigger ones that are there. Cigna 
uh, Delta Dental, Aetna, VSP, IMED, Blue Cross. Um, the the kind of caveat there is that not all Blue Crosses are the same. So Blue Cross of Georgia might be different than Blue Cross of Tennessee. So they only, they have limited uh, regions, if you will, or departments of uh, especially Blue Cross Blue Shield, um, Cigna, uh, Kaiser. There, there are specific vendors of theirs that are that are available, and uh, not all of them are. These interfaces are, are good in that they're much less expensive for clients, and and they are maintained by Ultimate, so they stay stay current. Uh, with the with any benefit vendor change you know, requirements changes, they're only configured and maintained by Ultimate. Um, and there's probably I think there's about 200 ish uh, vendors out there that that you see in interfaces are available, uh, but they are uh, pretty specific for 834 file format. Uh, benefit vendors. As long as ultimate uh, can meet your required schedule, this is the pre preferred method to go uh, if if those uh, if you're on the, one of those vendors. But just note that uh, it's only configured and maintained by ultimate. So ultimate, uh, you need to check with them, make sure they can meet your you know your benefit vendor change schedule if if you are uh, going live on on these type of interfaces. Next, we'll go over SQL framework interfaces. These are built and coded in SQL, but they use a defined framework from Ultimate, uh, and Ultimate uh, defines kind of the format of how the coding uh, is, is done. It's kind of a standard programming and, and in SQL for these type of interfaces. And what that does is ensures that, that future software upgrades of UltiPro do not affect it or do not adversely affect it. That they, they continue to operate properly after, after software upgrades. These are ex exports that that can be automated, and they can be run on an event. So, such as uh, it can monitor for you know a termination, or it can monitor for a close of a payroll, uh, or they can also be scheduled to run daily, weekly, hourly, etc. Uh, ultimate support will support. SQL framework interfaces, uh, as long as they're built by a certified, certified partner or by Ultimate, and uh, they follow the framework methodology. And Logic is already built into these framework interfaces for active and passive open enrollment, so you can, uh, it's, it's already built in, and, and, and you can run active and passive open enrollment files and provide to your vendors. Some common applications are benefit vendor files, you know, medical, dental, dental vision. Uh, if, uh, and the reason you would use this over UCN is A, if the vendor's not available for UCN, or B, ultimate can't meet your, meet your schedule. Uh, other common applications are FSA, HSA, uh, 401k demographic and contribution files, facility access and security files to update your uh, IT uh, security system or facility access system, and then general ledger as well. Just a note, uh, these SQL framework interfaces uh, for benefit vendors uh, can often take three to six weeks uh, as well, you know, to coordinate with your benefit vendors, to gather requirements, to build it, to test it, so if you are changing benefit vendors, uh, make sure you get the tech folks involved early so uh, your files are ready for open enrollment and or transition.
We good, Laura? Yes, we're great. Cool. All right. Uh, next, we'll go uh, to web services and APIs and reports as a service. Um, so these have been growing in popularity, as you guys know, uh, and Ultimate has has some built-in, I'll say, quote unquote, standard APIs that are available in all Ulti Pro environments. I have a link here for the documentation around those kind of standard APIs, uh, and that'll be on the slides that come out to you guys to, uh, so you can access that and look at what they have. Um, a note on this, Ultimate Software does not provide API services. So if either you as a client, your IT staff needs to, needs to program APIs, uh, a vendor, if the vendor needs an API, you know, um, they can program, pr program them or they have it as part of their service, or you can go to a, to a partner. Um, who can, you know, such as Mosaic, uh, and, and, and we can build those. Um, some common applications are non ulti pro uh, uh, recruiting and applicant tracking systems, such as ISOMs. Uh, we do quite a few ISOMs to ulti pro integrations using, using APIs. Uh, Active Directory, glo global third party pay. And then other API capable third party applications. Uh, I put HR Soft in here because they're a partner of Ultimate. They've got a, a compensation package that uses APIs to pull compensation data out of Ulti, Ulti Pro. You, you uh, manipulate it, make your changes uh, in HR Soft, and then it puts the, the data back into Ulti Pro. So like I said, there, there are pre-built uh, APIs in, available in Ulti uh, to import and export data, um, but there are specific fields that are available in those specific APIs. And not all, not all data fields are available. So um, especially if you're exporting data and you want to use an API, and the, the, AP, the fields are not available in, in the standard APIs, uh, they have a re reports as a service option. What, what that allows you to do is uh, build a BI report uh, in, in Ulti, in Cognos, and use an API to pull the data out of that report. So it opens up a whole lot of flexibility of, of the data fields that are available, um, as well as having logic you can build in a report or monitoring for certain events and activities uh, and gives you a lot of flexibility there. As you see up uh, on this slide, we did self-hosted. So APIs have to run somewhere. They have to be uh, run pretty much or own an application server. And so this is a self-hosted application server solution. Uh, the APIs don't run in UltiPro. It has to run outside UltiPro and reach into UltiPro and grab information or push information in. So in this solution, <clears throat> your IT team would, would need to stand up an application server and maintain that application server. Uh, through, through operation. And then we would, we or, or your team would go into that application server and write the API in, in, in code. Uh, we use C Sharp a lot <clears throat> for coding APIs um, on self-hosted application servers. So uh, in, in this particular diagram, you've got Ulti Pro, you've got a self-hosted application server, and then you would have another external platform. Let's, so ISOMs for, for instance. 
we would write the program on the application server. It would reach into ISOMS uh, and then push data to Ulti and then back uh, from Ulti back to ISOMS as well. But just the just the note is, you know, your IT team would need to provide an application server that's that's up all the time and and is is able to run your application. So next, along the same lines, is uh, integrations as a service, so a hosted API integration solution. So the APIs are, are very, you know, the API on the OLT Pro side is the same. Um, this is a cloud-hosted integration as a service platform uh, that would serve instead of the, the application server that your IT team would have to set up. So <clears throat> for those that have been around UltiPro for a while, it's kind of the difference in, uh, you remember on-premise uh, UltiPro versus cloud UltiPro, which is only available today. Um, yeah, but 15 years ago, they had, had on-premise where you could host your own and cloud. Uh, now, now it's only cloud-based. So as far as the, the uh, APIs for, for this solution, uh, it's hosted here are a couple of vendors that, that uh, we've dealt with before. Uh, uh, and uh, so Cloud Connectors is one, uh, MuleSoft is another, and Informatica. <coughs> and you know, Informatica is actually built into, into Ulti um, as Integration Studio, um, but this would be the, the the hosted version would be outside of outside of OT. <clears throat> Excuse me. So these third party uh, hosting platforms typically have their their own programming or or user interface to do the to do do the programming. Where the self hosted, if you write it in C sharp or something like that, it's a little more kind of code based. Uh, these are a little more uh, drag and drop. And, and configuration based rather than, than true, true coding. So the common applications are pretty much the same as, as the self-hosted, uh, you know, your, your non ulti pro modules, say for recruiting, applicant tracking, uh, onboarding, that kind of stuff. Uh, Active Directory, third, global third party pay. Uh, I do have a note here uh, as far as uh, a note of is whether you're using the self-hosted or the integration as a service um, and you're, uh, you're getting your IT department to do the coding, uh, just be, be cognizant of security uh, just to make sure that they don't have access to, to data and, and employee information that you don't want them to have access to. You have to properly set up the security and the web services that they have have access to, um, so you're not exposing uh, data and information that you don't necessarily want them to to see. So here's an example uh, API workflow. Uh, this was built with cloud connectors. So it's the integration as a service model. And uh, just to note, you know, the integration as a service model is, is pretty much a, a subscription uh, model similar to, to Ulti Pro that you're paying a, a, a monthly fee for them to host that, that application. But on this spe specific application, uh, it's ISOMS to Ulti Pro. Uh, ISOMS is an applicant tracking system, recruiting system and uh, the client wanted a better integration uh, between the two. So uh, the workflow, uh, a recruit gets to a point that, that an offer's uh, extended and accepted, their status gets changed in ISOMS, the API grabs their employee information and pushes it over to the pending hires table in, in UltiPro. At that point, the, the HR generalist or, or 
whoever on the Ulti Pro side completes the hire process. So it fills in the information that might not have been available in ISOMS and uh, completes the, the hire process. Once the hire process is completed, the API grabs uh, like the employee ID from Ulti and a couple more fields and ships that back to ISOMS. And that creates a handshake. So I know I'm talking about the same person on both sides and it keeps those, those records synced in ISOMS and in ulti -Pro. And in this particular uh, API solution, uh, they finish all their, their new hire documents in, in ISOMS. So uh, we wrote a third part of the API that grabs all of the new hire documents out of ISOMS and ships them over and puts them on the employee record in UltiPro. So, and, and all that happens behind the scenes. It's triggered by, you know, the new hire status and the completion of the hire in, in UltiPro. So, you know, outside of their normal, say recruiting functions or HR functions, they're not having to push buttons to get, get this uh, integrated or those, there's not double keying to keep employee records synced. So uh, all of that happens automatically. So I'm going to jump over to OODS. Uh, many of you probably know what OODS is. I just didn't want to, uh, just wanted to give a baseline knowledge. It's not a true integration point, but it is used in a lot of the integrations, especially if you want to automate uh, any of the imports and exports with a web import tool, SQL, back office. If you, if you want those automated to be sent or received from a vendor, uh, OODS is, is required for that. So OODS is Ultimate Data Exchange Services and it's an ultimate hosted SFTP site. So it's for secure file transmission and receipt of sensitive uh, files. I guess it could be non-sensitive files too, but uh, it, it uh, provides a drive that, that can send or receive files uh, securely and UltiPro can monitor OODs uh, as far as automated imports and exports and grab files as they show up and, and keep, keep you from having to, to manually run files. So back to, to this, um, you know, there, there's lots of types of, of UltiPro integrations. Uh, many can accomplish the same mission, but they're they're pushing data into or pulling data out of UltiPro to an external source, whether it's a benefit vendor, a, a external system, uh, or a, another process. And so, you know, here are some some examples. You know, benefit vendors, 401k, dental, all that kind of stuff, GL, bank, licensing, Active Directory background checks, learning management system, recruiting, all that kind of, kind of stuff. So there's lots of different integrations that you can use to send data back and forth. Uh, some have, have uh, better capabilities, some are easier, some are cheaper, um, but that kind of gives you a little bit, hopefully a fairly high level view of, of what integrations are out there for, for LT Pro. So I will open it up for questions. Matt, while we're waiting, I wanted to jump in because I know we talked a little bit at the beginning about just the overall value of UltiPro is, you know, you, you call it that source of truth. Can you speak to that a little bit more? Yeah, and, uh, you, know, it, you know, these days, for most companies, 60 to 70% of their operating expenses are employee related. And so to have that much, have information to 
uh, make informed business decisions around that big of a chunk of your your operating expenses uh, is is crucial and to use that data to populate or or share among uh, your team among your uh, decision makers but also among the the other systems and vendors and processes that that depend on knowing who works for your company and where they work and how much they make and, and all that kind of good stuff uh, you know ulti pro is very powerful and has a lot of information and data that that um, is, is very valuable if you use it correctly and so integrations are a way that you can use that uh, data outside of ulti pro and, and use it as the the system of record the you know the the the, the, the truth and uh, operate your business better. Great. And I know we touched on this a little bit earlier, but I know some folks may be wondering who can develop integrations for you. So good question. Uh, many clients create their, their own um, as far as back office imports and exports. Uh, a lot of them are using the web import tool these days. Not as many have access to SQL to write or, or the capability to write SQL. Um, but uh, there's also part certified partners like Mosaic uh, and then Ultimate Software also has services that can do it. Uh, things like the UCN interfaces have to be done by Ultimate. Uh, but any of the other ones uh, can be done by a partner, by Ultimate, or most of them by clients as well. Okay. And we've got a question from the group. Um, which integration option is most commonly used? Um, I think just from a legacy standpoint, probably the back office imports and exports, just because there's so many of them out there, um, you know, for time clock imports and, and uh, simple-ish, uh, in, in quotes, uh, exports. Um, there are a lot of SQL framework interfaces, uh, mostly for ben benefit vendor files. Uh, APIs are becoming more common, uh, but not, not overly out there yet. I think because a lot of people don't understand them. Okay. Other questions, folks? I know one other, Matt, that uh, I know we touched on this earlier, but uh, I know we, we hear a lot of talk about security too. Um, and maybe this revolves a little bit more around um, APIs, but I know I've, you and Dan have touched on this one. Could you expand a little on that? Uh, well, there's a couple of things on security. There's, there's if you're writing APIs uh, or your IT team is writing APIs, setting up the security so they only have access to the data that you want them to have access to or the specific web services that they have they should have access to. You don't want to just give them keys to the kingdom and let them run rampant in, in all the data in Ulti because, uh, you know, there's a lot of sensitive data in there. Um, but another piece of security is automating some of these processes and some of these files uh, because if you give somebody the ability to manually manipulate the GL file, they can cover up fraud and abuse and waste uh, by manually manipulating the, the GL file. But if you got that automated to go directly from OT to your GL system, it kind of eliminates, you know, maintains control and, and eliminates the, the opportunity for them to do that. Um, same goes with, with other, let's say, uh, 401k contribution files. Uh, you know, if, if somebody can manually manipulate that, they could change the values 
of what's going in one person's account versus another. So automating some of these files and not letting people have access to it uh, increases security. So it's kind of kind of two two prongs of that, but you know, using interfaces to uh, to automate files definitely reduces the vulnerability vulnerability uh, for, and, and and opportunities for for somebody to uh, make bad decisions. Right. Thank you. Any others? I'll give you all a couple minutes if anyone's shy and has anything lingering that we can wrap up any loose ends for you. Otherwise, I just want to remind you guys first to thank you so much for joining us today. And also to remind you, um, Ceci has put in the group chat the address to the blog on our website. We hope that you will read and enjoy that. And um, later in the day, as I mentioned, we'll send up a follow-up email to you, thanking you again for joining us with a link to the recording and slides from this presentation. And uh, we hope you'll forward it to anyone else who wasn't able to be with us today. Um, and uh, in closing, thank you to everyone. And we hope that uh, we will see you at Connections. Thanks, everybody.